I am preparing 10 delicious easy meals. Let's start off with the first meal. Tonight I am making Spanish rice. I have one pound of burger in my electric skillet. I will have this electric skillet linked below. For seasonings, I have used salt, pepper, and a little bit of Lowry's. To the pan, I have added one chopped green pepper and some chopped onion. After the peppers, onions, and burger cook together, I am going to add a can of drained mushrooms and another can of mushrooms, but I'm keeping the juice in it. If you didn't want two cans of mushrooms, you would just use the can with the juice. I'm adding one cup of rice and two tablespoons. One can of stewed tomatoes. After these cook a little bit, I will break them up so that the tomatoes go all the way through the dish. I have a cup of water. I'm adding a few dashes, only a few, <laughs> of Tabasco sauce to the water, and I'm gonna add this to the pan. I'm going to add salt and pepper. I'm going to cover this pan and let it cook for 30 minutes, not lifting the cover. Okay, after the 30 minutes, you just give it a really good stir and it is ready to serve. For the seasonings for the rotisserie chicken, you need one teaspoon of chili powder, three teaspoons of smoked paprika, one teaspoon of garlic powder, two teaspoons of dried parsley, one teaspoon of salt, and a half a teaspoon of pepper. I am placing four balls of aluminum foil on the bottom of my crock pot. This is what the chicken is going to sit on. After I have rinsed and patted dry the chicken, I have these great big huge garlic cloves. They're called elephant garlic. I'm going to place those in the cavity of the chicken. Now I'm going to place that seasoning all over the chicken and I'm going to rub it in really good. Then I'm going to place this chicken in the crock pot. I'm going to cook mine on low for about six hours. As you can see, the chicken fell apart. <laughs> this can go in the broiler if you want to crisp up the skin a little bit. This chicken can be used in many ways. You can make chicken salad. You can just have it in salads for the week eat on it for lunches. It's completely up to you. It is nacho night at our house tonight and it smells so good. We haven't had nachos in a while. So I have two pounds of ground beef and I added some taco seasoning to that. And in this pan I have refried beans and this pan is cheese. This is the cheese that we use, is the gourmet nacho cheese. It's so good, it's almost like restaurant style. And then the refried beans are the traditional old El Paso. For toppings, we have some tomato, green pepper, onion. I have some guacamole, taco sauce, and sour cream. I forgot the lettuce. But I have sliced black olives. So those are our toppings, and of course we have chips. I thought I'd jump on here really quickly and let you know that this recipe that I'm making tonight is a new recipe to us. It sounds super delicious and really easy and quick to put together, which is right up my alley. This one comes from Skinny Taste and it is called Sesame Encrusted Chicken Tenders. I think I have chicken tenders out. If not, it'll be chicken breast, but I think I have chicken tenders out for this one. So let me show you how to put this really quick, delicious meal together. Oh, and we're gonna be cheating tonight with sides. <laughs> Normally I would serve rice with this, but I don't feel like cooking too much tonight. So Jason's like, hey, how about if we run to KFC and grab their macaroni and cheese and mashed potatoes and gravy? And I'm like, okay, <laughs> sounds good to me. I'm quickly toasting up some sesame seeds. In this bowl, I have equal parts of sesame seed oil and soy sauce. And then in this bowl, I have some toasted sesame seeds, a little bit of panko, and some salt. And I only had chicken breasts out. Oh, I thought it was tenders. So I went ahead and I cut the chicken breasts, and I'm going to 
dip. I have a little bit of pepper on the chicken breast. You can put salt and pepper. So I'm gonna dip them in here. And then I'm gonna dip them in here and get them coated really, really well. I'm gonna put them on a cookie sheet. I have my oven preheated to 425. I'm gonna cook them for about 10 minutes, flip them and cook them for five or so minutes more until they're completely done. So this is the KFC mashed potatoes and gravy. This is the chicken. Doesn't that look scrumptious? It smells really good. And then we also have macaroni and cheese. For crock pot sun-dried tomato chicken, I have added a half a can of cream of chicken with herbs soup in the bottom of my crock pot. To this, I'm adding four skinless boneless chicken broths that I have seasoned with salt and pepper. To a bowl, I am adding the rest of the can of the cream of chicken soup with herbs, along with another can of cream of soup with herbs. I have added some chopped, drained, sun-dried tomatoes, six cloves of minced garlic, a fourth cup of grated Parmesan cheese, teaspoon of dried basil, this is optional. I'm gonna add a half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. I'm gonna give all of this a stir and then we're gonna head back over to the crock pot. I have spread the mixture over the chicken breast. I'm gonna cook this on low for six hours. You can serve this chicken over rice or over pasta, or you can just leave it as is. It's completely up to you, but it is delicious. Tonight we are having chicken fajitas and you just can't get any easier than chicken fajitas. If you don't want to make them on the stove, you can put them in the oven and cook them on like a sheet pan meal. But I'm cooking mine on the stove top tonight. So I cut up my chicken into little strips. I did add a little salt and pepper to them. I am using this for fajita seasoning. You can make your own if you want to. But I'm just gonna put a little bit on the chicken while it's cooking. It also says to add a third cup of water. I just added a couple of red peppers, orange pepper, green pepper, and some onions all sliced up and let them cook down a little bit and I'm going to add the rest of that seasoning. For a side, sometimes I just take some tortilla chips, put some cheese on top of the tortilla chips, bake them in the oven on 350 until the cheese is melted and the chips get a little browned and then everybody can dunk them into salsa or just eat them as is. Okay, you can hear the tea maker in the background, but this is what the chips should look like. They smell so good, all toasted up with melty cheese. So mine looks sloppy, but you know, sloppy the better, right? So I have um, guacamole and sour cream on mine. Jason got out some banana peppers too. And hot sauces, I'll show you what he's doing with his. Jason is making nachos out of his, so he took those cheesy chips and put the peppers and chicken and stuff on top. And now he has some salsa, guac. Are you doing banana peppers then? Yeah. And are you doing sour cream? Yep. Foo. For the crock pot cube steak, in a bowl, you're gonna add one can of French onion soup, one can of au jus gravy. I am also adding a half cup of water and one can of cream of chicken. I'm going to mix this all together I have poured a little bit of the gravy mixture into the bottom of my crock pot. On top of that, I'm going to place four cube steaks. I have added salt and pepper to taste. Now I am going to add the rest of the gravy. I'm going to cook this on low for six hours. When you make this, make sure that you make a gravy out of the juices from the crock pot because this is one of the best flavored gravies you are going to actually crave this one. I have a big container of chicken gravy. I'm gonna heat that through. For the chicken croissants, I usually just use regular crescent rolls, two packs of them. Um, and they didn't have the regular ones. They only had the Butterflake. We have mistakenly used these in the past and they are perfectly fine. In a pan on the stove, I diced up some chicken and cooked it thoroughly. I seasoned it with salt, pepper, garlic powder, and onion powder. I'm gonna set this aside and let it cool off a little bit. This 
this is one of our favorite recipes. This is something that my guys request quite often. I have the full recipe linked below in my ebook along with 19 other easy, delicious meals. I peeled and diced up some potatoes. I have them bubbling away for mashed potatoes. I have a bag of super sweet corn in the microwave. For the base of the wet burritos, I took a couple pounds of burger, scrambled it up, added some taco seasoning. And in this pan, I have some canned Cerrico's nacho cheese heated up. And in this pan, I have some refried beans. Thanks, old El Paso, for making my life easier. In the microwave, I am heating up some medium enchilada sauce. For toppings, I have some shredded cheddar, shredded lettuce, <laughs> black olives, sour cream, onion, tomato, and guacamole. For wet burritos, we take cheese, put it inside of a tortilla, take a little bit of that taco meat, put that on top of the cheese so it starts melting. And then I top it with some refried beans, and I'm gonna fold it up burrito style. Then you scoop the creamy cheese over the top of the whole entire burrito. Drizzle the red enchilada sauce on top of that. I've added tomatoes, onions, black olives. Can't forget the shredded lettuce. And then I'm gonna top it with some sour cream and guacamole. And that is a wet burrito. We have had these in restaurants before and thought, you know what? We can make this at home. And we have done that ever since. Tonight, I'm gonna keep it really super simple with dinner. I am using panko and parmesan. I'm gonna put those in a gallon sized bag along with some salt, pepper, garlic powder, and onion powder. I'm gonna take my chicken, I'm gonna put it in the gallon sized bag, I'm gonna give it a shake, basically like a shake and bake. I'm gonna put it on a cookie sheet. My oven is set on 350, and I'm gonna bake it until it reaches the right temperature. For one of the sides, I am making some instant mashed potatoes. We love the buttery home style instant potatoes by Idahoan. And we are going to have some green beans. We season them with this Silly Salt by Paula Dean. This is really good. I'll have it linked below. The recipes are linked below for you and your family to enjoy. Are you looking for more inspiration of 10 easy meals? Here are two more 10 easy meal videos that you can find inspiration from. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you soon.